First, let's consider Pontius Pilate. Historians know little about this cruel judge who condemned me to death, swayed by the crowd's demands. Born in Italy or Scotland, Pilate served as the Roman prefect of Judea during my ministry. According to Philo of Alexandria, a Jewish philosopher, Pilate was a terrible judge, known for stealing from people, executing them without trial, and being extremely cruel. The Bible, in John 18 verse 37, reveals Pilate questioning me about being a king, to which I replied, You say that I am a king. For this purpose, I was born and for this purpose, I came into the world to bear witness to the truth. Roman historian Tacitus notes that Pilate was removed from his post and sent back to Rome for using excessive force. However, this wasn't the end of his story. According to Eusebius of Caesarea, Pilate committed suicide by order of Emperor Caligula. His dead body was thrown into the Tiber River, where scientists later found evidence of his existence. The next man who played a significant role in my crucifixion was Cassius Linus, a Roman centurion. Known as the soldier who pierced my side, Linus was from Cappadocia, Turkey. Though his name doesn't appear in the biblical texts, the Gospel of Nicodemus, a forbidden book, names him. After his vision was impaired by the blood and water from my side, Linus became a devout Christian. Arrested and beheaded for his new faith, he became one of the early martyrs. It was believed for a long time that his decapitated head possessed magical powers and cured King Herod of Judea, a man who also suffered a horrific death for his role in my crucifixion. King Herod, who reigned from 74 to 4 BCE, was a puppet of Rome overseeing Judea. In the Bible, Herod is portrayed as a terrible man. While he wasn't directly involved in my crucifixion, his actions were driven by cruelty. Upon learning of my birth, Herod, fearing a potential rival to his throne, ordered the massacre of all babies in Bethlehem two years old or younger. Matthew 2 verse 18 recounts, A voice was heard in Ramah, weeping in loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children, she refused to be comforted because they are no more. Herod's cruelty extended beyond strangers, as he also murdered three of his sons and one of his wives. His death is believed to have been caused by complications related to gangrene or kidney failure. Suffering from severe itching, intestinal pain, difficulty breathing, frequent convulsions, and genital infection, his death was as horrific as his actions. Emperor Tiberius, who ruled Rome from 14 to 37 CE, is another figure to consider. Although the Gospels don't attribute any direct role to him in my crucifixion, the distance between Judea and Rome meant that those in high authority were often uninformed about events in Judea. This allowed Pontius Pilate to proceed with my execution without interference. Roman historian Suetonius states that Emperor Tiberius met a tragic end, poisoned, starved, and suffocated with a pillow by his grandnephew Caligula, who would later become one of Rome's most infamous emperors. Among my followers, one of the most notorious betrayers was Judas Iscariot, one of my twelve apostles. For thirty pieces of silver, Judas betrayed me, leading the Roman soldiers to the Garden of Gethsemane and identifying me with a kiss. Acts 1 verse 18 tells us that Judas bought a field with the price of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle and all his bowels gushed out. After his betrayal, Judas died a shameful death by hanging himself. His body underwent horrific decomposition, nearly exploding. Another disciple who played a role in my downfall was the Apostle Peter. While not as severe as Judas' betrayal, Peter's denial was significant. During my capture, Peter denied knowing me three times, as recounted in the Gospels. Though he later felt remorse and lamented his actions, his denials were a grave betrayal. Peter's end came in the form of crucifixion, like mine, but upside down, as he felt unworthy to die in the same manner. The last figure I will speak of is the high priest Joseph Caiaphas. During my captivity, Caiaphas followed Jewish tradition and ordered my arrest in the temple. He and his father-in-law, Annas, conspired to have me killed. Although Caiaphas lacked the authority to order my death, he accused me of blasphemy and sought the help of Pontius Pilate to sentence me. Legend has it that Caiaphas lived a long life after my crucifixion, filled with regret and sadness. He eventually died of old age in 66, c. on the island of Crete. Despite having the least horrific death among those responsible for my crucifixion, only God knows the fate Caiaphas faced after his life. Reflecting on the lives and fates of those who played crucial roles in my crucifixion reveals a blend of divine justice and eternal mercy. The stories of Pontius Pilate, Cassius Linus, King Herod, Emperor Tiberius, 
Judas Iscariot, Apostle Peter, and Joseph Caiaphas underscore the truth that human actions have consequences in this world and the next. The Bible teaches us about God's justice, which is both rigorous and compassionate. The tragic deaths and eternal consequences faced by those who betrayed or harmed me highlight the seriousness of sin and the reality of divine justice. However, we are also reminded of the power of repentance and the possibility of redemption, as seen in the transformation of Cassus Linus and Peter's repentance after denying me. As we contemplate these events, we are led to assess our own lives and actions. We are called to seek God's mercy and forgiveness, striving to live in a way that honors and glorifies my sacrifice on the cross. The example of my life and death inspires us to seek justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with God. Through the stories of these men, we learn the weight of sin and the depth of God's justice. We thank the Lord for His endless mercy and the ability to transform hardened hearts. May this reflection guide us to live according to God's will, being instruments of peace and love. Remember, my sacrifice was for the redemption of all humanity. Let us live lives that glorify God and inspire others to seek Him. Amen.